Hi, Ralph. I'm very happy to talk to you today after some technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start right away. Ralph, can you please introduce yourself? Tell us who you are. When did your blockchain journey started and how did it start? It? Perfect. So first of all, thank you very much, uh, Maria, for giving me the chance uh, to be part of your uh, education efforts. Um, I think it's very important that these kind of uh, things happen in the space because uh, at the moment uh, there are not enough. And I really appreciate that I have the ability to participate uh, in your uh, program and uh, to give your listeners a bit of advice from my side. So um, my name is uh, Ralf uh, Hofacker. Uh, I'm uh, from uh, Germany, uh, living and working for the last four or five years um, uh, in Zurich. Uh, and before I uh, arrived uh, in Zurich, I worked uh, for many years in a consultancy um, in London. And in about uh, 2016, um, when I was um, one of the uh, leaders in the consultancy office uh, in London, I had to explore new territories to expand our business. So as my background is mostly back then in insure tech, um, I started to figure out if there was anything new that could be um, used as a a jumping board um, to develop new business cases. And that's when I first came across um, blockchain um, as a concept and uh, the many different use cases uh, that uh, you can think about. And with everyone in the space, um, usually when you hear about blockchain, the next step is Bitcoin, of course. And uh, the kind of first in-depth journey I made on this overall topic was uh, the acquiring and the reading of uh, Mastering Bitcoin, uh, the very famous book uh, by Andreas Antonopoulos. And when you start to read this book, of course, if you have a bit of a technical background, as I have luckily, you kind of immediately realize uh, what amazing um, consequences this can have, uh, not only for a specific industry like I am involved in, but in general for the whole world. So from then onwards, I basically dedicated most of my personal or private time outside of my uh, regular work on this topic and have uh, enjoyed this journey for the last four or five years very much. Perfect. I know that you're uh, an investment management professional. Can you tell us what is the impact of the cryptocurrencies on your business and on your daily work? That's a good question, um, Maria. So just to give a bit of a background, so I'm working for um, Leontech, uh, which is a, a Swiss uh, company listed at the exchange, specializing in um, offering uh, and issuing structured products. Those products are investment products for different uh, types of investors and uh, different types of risk and return profiles. And those are um, also issued together with uh, major uh, banks and asset managers uh, out there. So Leontech overall sort of um, provides access to any sort of investment or asset classes uh, underneath that is possibly to invest in. And we strive ourselves for providing this in a very efficient and cost-saving manner. So if that you take as a sort of a high level summary, you immediately no, uh, notice that given this um, excess um, achieving the cryptocurrency space as one of the major new markets is naturally something that also falls into the realm um, of Leontech. On the crypto offering side, Leontech uses currently a very similar approach uh, to others in the market, establishing access by providing asset classes or structures that you as an institutional investor or as a retail investor know already about by completely different asset classes that you naturally invest in using ETFs, uh, for example, or just um, uh, investments into certificates that are listed on, on exchanges. So on the Leontech side, this is exactly what we're doing. Uh, we are participating in offering this asset class, not by direct investment into the underlying cryptocurrencies, but by structured products that are following the same regulatory legal obligations as all the other asset class based products that you as a retail and an institutional investor can invest in. Are cryptocurrencies something that institutional investors and private investors are looking into? Is there more interest in the past years? What are your observations? 
So here, of course, uh, uh, you have to take my statements a bit with a grain of salt because uh, I'm a bit of a biased person in this regard as I look into the space uh, very deeply. But uh, what I can say more or less uh, from a um, yeah, conceptual level is that you just see over the last four or five years immense efforts being spent on incumbents in the banking, in the finance space, who try to prepare themselves to offer any sort of exposure on this new asset class, right? So you have on the one hand side, the companies that are already um, existing in the financial uh, services business who are preparing themselves a lot for providing services like um, investments, like uh, uh, custody uh, of digital assets. Um, you see that uh, this is done for both companies as well as individuals. I particularly live in the beautiful canton of Zug here in Switzerland, uh, which is also known in the crypto space as uh, Crypto Valley. And if you might be familiar with that, uh, most of the larger blockchain uh, based companies and projects have their um, let's say jurisdictional residents in Souk so that there are a lot of events uh, that you can participate in and you can see how much appetite, how much interest there is by both institutional and retail um, investors in general. So you can just use something like uh, the Grayscale Bitcoin Fund uh, as one of the major Bitcoin holders in the institutional space where you can easily observe over time how much this has grown. And you can try to extrapolate from that uh, with new uh, bigger companies like NIDIC in the US who is uh, onboarding constantly new institutional investors. And on the retail side, I mean, uh, just look at what is happening now with uh, the introduction of uh, Bitcoin um, as legal tender in El Salvador. So even if you don't want to necessarily be exposed to somehow uh, using uh, countries like El Salvador, it's automatically happening as well. Ralph, I know that you also invest a lot in your education when it comes to blockchain. And let's talk a little bit about that because the people that are watching this video, they want to start a career in blockchain and they want to educate themselves about blockchain in order to start a career. So I know you're currently doing the master's in blockchain and digital currencies from the University of Nicosia. And I know that you're also a certified Bitcoin professional from the cryptocurrency certification consortium. So can you talk about these two certifications that you have? Can you recommend them? And what else can you recommend uh, for educational purposes? Thanks, uh, Maria. So the very first important point is... Uh, <laughs> Blockchain is completely new still in, in, in many ways. Um, it's not something that you can just, um, let's say, learn in the same way as you learn uh, traditional things that you will see uh, being um, uh, educated on in many different schools and universities all over the world. So the main thing you have to do when you want to enter this space is be curious. Be curious, be open, and don't try to think uh, that one thing is better than the other therefore i only uh, want uh, to do to this be open for different views on the same topic and try to get into this critical thinking mode i think that's the most important thing in general now concretely on the education side i mean i've been through the first few years without doing formal education i've done a lot of my private side uh, back in 2017 i also participated in this uh, back then ico craze and uh, um, invested back then also in many of these ICOs and in one because I want to, as I say before, always try to understand how it really works. I actually worked together with one of the, the startups uh, in London back then, uh, which also opened their uh, foundation um, in Switzerland, in Zug, where I'm now the president of the Pillar uh, Foundation. So this automatically gives you immediately, if you want to, education in many different uh, regards. And this is a general uh, thing as well. You don't need necessarily to be of a technological background, of a finance background. I am, and that's the reason why in this way I try to find uh, uh, new uh, things and innovation, but you can be of any uh, kind of background. And because this is a huge industry, you will find something that will cover certain aspects of what you're familiar with. You just have to explore that and understand how does this change with this new technology? And then just start and learning by doing. 
Exactly, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on, on your specific question on the education program, so the Master of Science in uh, Blockchain and Digital Currencies uh, with the University of Nicosia, it's just amazing. I mean, um, from an educational perspective, um, because the content itself or the development in this industry is so fast, uh, some of the courses that I attended um, have a bit of a view on an earlier period of the development, like in 2017-18, but you get many different aspects from an innovation perspective, from a legal perspective, from a regulatory perspective, financial, technolo technological. So it's a, a very nice roundup of different topics that are important when you want to work in the blockchain industry. It comes with a, with a price tag. So if you are someone who is already working uh, in a company, for example, example, what I do, I'm bold, so I ask my company, please uh, give me a subsidy for my education and please pay parts uh, of that for me because I'm Smart. interested in And this has worked here um, and I recommend this to everyone out there to try to go for the same because it shows to your employer that you are willing to learn something new, right? And therefore I recommend it. The second part of it is this program is one of the few ones that officially give you a title in blockchain um, technology um, and digital currencies. And therefore it attracts currently people from all around the world. So I'm currently in a group of more than a hundred students where you have Africa, Australia, the America, Latin America, Europe, you have everything involved. And you get different views on this topic, which is very important to not be blindsided by your own thinking so that you can um, uh, expect to see something about a topic that you wouldn't have expected at all. That's the major benefit of making such a program. So it's the network and of course the content. On I, the, feel like, I feel like in, in blockchain, the network is the most valuable thing because through your network you're learning a lot you get different perspectives so every program that offers you this this large network from different personalities with different backgrounds is amazing i fully agree with that yes mm -hmm. exactly yes and on the um um certificate uh, for a Bitcoin um, as a professional. This is a new initiative uh, that this uh, consortium has started a couple of years ago um, from a financial engineering or a financial or investment management perspective. For me, this has the kind of potential in maybe not the no, not the, the so near, but the far future to be in a way equivalent to uh, what uh, many are familiar with the CFA certificate uh, for char uh, financial chartered analysts. Um, of course, so far it's not yet in depth as these 600 pages of books uh, you have to learn uh, in order to make it, but it's sort of the starting point for it so that you can just show to the professional outside world, hey, I'm someone who's interested in this technology and I want to understand what can it be used for. And this is what this certificate just shows. It's not going into a really, really high level of detail, but just by you trying to get it, you automatically are incentivized to learn more about it. And what is important in the overall um, education sense is be open to explore Telegram, explore Twitter, explore um, YouTube and LinkedIn. These are my four major resources that I spend too much time with uh, to get the different views. So Telegram, I think, is the best tool in the crypto space for uh, finding um, like-minded people uh, who engage in conversations about a certain topic whenever something happens in the industry, uh, there are comments made about it, you can give your opinion, then uh, you are maybe corrected or you are uh, celebrated for seeing things in the way that others see it. And it gives you automatically this energy to kind of continue and explore more about it. So this is what I would say as an alternative, I highly recommend to. Great. Thank you, Ralph, so much. This was a very, very valuable conversation. I personally learned a lot and I hope that everyone that watched this video also can learn a lot and get excited for jumping into the crypto world. Thank you very much, Maria. It was a pleasure to uh, be part uh, of your uh, program. I hope that your listeners uh, can take away something as well. Um, if there are any sort of questions on certain topics that we've talked about, I'm also happy to receive um, messages or questions on my LinkedIn uh, or on my uh, Twitter. 
feel free to reach out uh, and there are no wrong questions. There are only questions that spawn interest or more need for clarification. And that's important because one of the things I don't like is when people make statements out there who are just wrong and no one is saying something about it to clarify. So mm -hmm. help me please to try and improve the education of everyone out there. I'm trying actually to start a bit of a program in uh, uh, Costa Rica and in El Salvador in a business school uh, to give a bit of more education to the Spanish speaking world. And if you jump on board, you can do the same. Widen your knowledge and then use your knowledge to educate others. That's what I would like yeah, to do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, Ralph. Cheers. <laughs>